Our next topic is soybeans. We wanted to talk about soybean flowering today. When do soybeans start to flower? We were talking earlier today about how unpredictable things have been this year and how the weather has been a little funky and, and planting in some areas has been really delayed. But one thing is pretty predictable. At the end of June, the days start to get shorter and that triggers soybean plants to start flowering in our part of the world. Well, the reason why is June 21st is the longest day of the year. After that, when the days start shortening, there are plants, certain soybeans, that will detect that shortening of the days, and those soybean plants are called indeterminate soybeans. What this basically means is they don't care if they were planted May 1st, June 1st, whenever, it does not make any difference. They sense, hey, the day length is getting shorter, I need to start maturing. So it begins the reproductive stages in soybean plants. Now, we deal with that in the northern United States, these indeterminate soybeans. In the southern United States, they have determinate soybeans where it reaches a certain growth stage and all the early growth stages, the vegetative growth stages occur, then flowering happens. So it depends on what area of the country you live in, but if you're in the northern part of the United States, the soybeans in your area are going to start flowering any day here. And even though soybeans are starting to reproduce in our part of the world, they are still going to continue their vegetative growth. They're still going to be growing as we're talking about this. So the big thing is you don't want to put additional stress on those soybeans when they're trying to grow vegetatively and start putting those flowers out and start making pods and those kind of things. There's a lot of things going on in that plant. You just don't want to slow it down. So selection of herbicides to control weeds at this time of the year is really critical. Yeah, weeds, insects, and diseases are all stresses that Let's face it, you can control all those things. To begin with, on the weed side of things, you know, even though Roundup is safe to Roundup Ready soybeans, it's not 100% safe. Might be 99.5% safe, but still when Roundup gets put into that plant, that plant then has to compartmentalize that Roundup. It doesn't metabolize it, it compartmentalizes it. It takes it, shoves it down into pockets in the root, and basically locks it up. So it still takes some energy to do that. Now I'm not saying it's any big deal. It's probably nothing for you to worry about, but it, it's at least something for you to think about. So if you can, it's nice to have the last of your weeds sprayed by the time the beans start to flower. Now, we have some other products, some of the older products that a lot of guys now are saying, oh, my Roundup isn't working very well, and I'll agree with that, but should I throw in a tank mix partner? Should I use Harmony GT or Harmony SG? Should I use Flexstar? Should I use Cobra? Should I use Pursuit? Well, the answer is no. Uh, you really shouldn't. At this point of the year, uh, some of those harsher products Boy, I would really shy away from them because they're going to put additional stress on the plant. You may have a little bit of leaf burn, which is going to decrease the amount of leaf surface available for photosynthesis to generate new energy for that plant. I just don't think it's a good idea at all. At this point in the year with Roundup Ready Soybeans, the best tank mix partner is just a little bit more Roundup. It's going to be safer to the crop and also you aren't going to have all those other issues going on. Well, you can throw in one of these other tank mix partners it may ding yield, it may hurt your beans, it may make them look bad. The yield issue, it's just a question how much yield is it really going to hurt? Is it going to be a big deal? We just don't know. So sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. Depends a lot on what the conditions are after you spray. Well, after you spray, what you'd really like to see is you'd like to see good moisture conditions and relatively good heat. Not excessive heat, but good enough heat that you're gonna have good growing conditions for that plant. Because what that means for you is you're gonna have good regrowth and good recovery after you spray those herbicides. So if you do need to spray something that's gonna be a little bit tougher out there than just straight Roundup, go ahead and get it done when you know you're gonna have a few good growing days after your application. And this is one of the reasons why we talk so much about pre-emerge herbicides. You need to use a pre-emerge herbicide in every crop that you're in, so you don't have to spray in times that you really shouldn't be spraying. All right, so that's weeds. Insects and diseases are a couple other things that can really stress that crop when it's trying to put on seed, it's trying to produce flowers and pods and everything else. So what should we do in terms of insects and diseases? Well, you absolutely have to get them under control. And at this point in the year, when you're in the reproductive stages, you have to be scouting fairly regularly in your field because insect problems can literally blow in overnight and they can really blow up pretty quick in your fields. So get after insect problems on the early side. Now, when we're first into flowers and through full blooms, it doesn't take many things like, say, soybean aphids, for example, to justify a treatment. South Dakota State University has done some good research documenting different stages of growth. And at R2, or full bloom, it only takes a few aphids, less than 10 aphids per plant, to justify treatment at that stage. That's how important it is 
when you're going to stress that crap at that stage, you just can't have that. Well, I kind of look at the disease thing. Once you see disease, you're already too late. You've got to spray early. And that's one of our big messages to you today is just make sure you're spraying on the early side. If things get to be a disaster, you walk out to your field and it's a mess with disease, with insects, with weeds. You've lost so much yield, it's unbelievable. We've got good commodity prices. Don't let that yield slip away. Spray early to get these things taken care of. Well, with soybean flowering, we know what time of year it's going to happen in our part of the world with indeterminate soybeans. We're going to see it as the days get shorter. Soybean plants are going to start flowering. So do keep an eye on all these things that could stress your crop and hurt your yields and get them under control. Well, when it comes to flowering, that's actually how I was first able to identify our weed of the week. We'll tell you how to stop it on your farm coming up later in the show.